Good morning, everybody. This is Christiana at the Longmont Yarn Shop, and we are celebrating National Crochet Month by learning how to make a coffee cup cozy. So uh, this is a really super simple project. I'd say you can do it if you're a beginner, kind of advanced beginner. Uh, basically, all you need to know for this particular project is how to chain, single crochet, and slip stitch. So, I don't actually use a, a pattern per se for this. I've kind of made mine own up just because it is a very simple project. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, I've got some worsted weight yarn here, and let me adjust my camera a little bit. That's awful close. Uh, this is just some Malabrigo Rios that I have left over from another project. So this project is also a great way to use up any scraps you have from just leftover projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my slip knot and get my hook in there. So sorry, I'm kind of watching on camera and off camera at the same time. So the way I kind of determine the measurements on this is I cheated a little bit. I went to my favorite coffee house, got just a medium sized drink, and I measured around the thickest part of my coffee cup and it was about nine and a half inches. So you don't want to make it exactly nine and a half inches because it needs to be a little snug to fit your cup very well. So what I figured with uh, the way that I crochet, because I do crochet kind of tight, is that 39 chains was the perfect amount. So I'm going to chain 39. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, oops, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I know it's very exciting listening to me count. 31, 32. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. Okay, now to start the coffee cup cozy, uh, you need to single crochet into your chain. So uh, you never chain or single crochet, excuse me, into that first chain against your hook. You want to single crochet into that second chain. And the way I teach you how to single crochet into a chain is to find that V. So there's one leg of the V and then the other leg of the V. And you put your hook right between the legs of the V. Wrap over, pull through your chain so you've got two loops on your hook. Wrap over and then pull through both loops on your hook. So you do that again. Put your hook through the chain. Wrap. Pull through the chain so that you've got the two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So you do that all the way across. Because you're not working into that first chain, you will have 38 stitches, not 39, like you had chained. So I'm just going to single crochet all the way across. So, like I said, I'm working with Malabrigo Rios. This particular color is called Arco Iris. I don't know if we have it in stock right now, but I think we should be getting some soon. I know we have this in the colorway in the chunkier yarn in the Mecha. So, if you're interested in Arco Iris, that's where we've got it. And I know the um, supplies listed for this set a size G hook. I've actually gone up a couple hook sizes because I do crochet so tightly. And uh, this is actually a good project to kind of figure out how you crochet. Thank you, Jennifer, I love this color. Um, this is a good project to figure out kind of your gauge and how you crochet if you crochet tight like I do if you crochet loose. And um, everything is, it 
it's not written in stone. So if you are using a pattern and you notice you're not getting the same stitches per inch that the designer recommends, then go up a hook size, go down a hook size. Sorry, I know this is really interesting watching me single crochet across. <laughs> and Melanie just walked in. Good morning, Melanie. Good morning, Allie. I hope you're doing well. So, getting close to the end of my chain here. So the reason I really like coffee cup cozies is not only are they quick and fun. Oh, hi, Jennifer. We're making coffee cup cozies for like a, when you go to your neighborhood coffee shop. So this is a super fun project, which is one of my one of the reasons why I like it so much. Plus, I mean, we're not throwing these guys away now. It's a little less um, waste in a landfill somewhere. Good morning, Terry. Plus, these are great, you know, um, little gifts for someone if you have a coffee or tea drinker in your life. So, I'm sure as you're watching, you can see I do crochet tightly. It's something I've been working on, but I can always go up a hook size, which I am okay with that. <laughs> And I don't know about you guys, but I prefer the crochet hooks with the handles on them. They're just a little easier to grip. Um, they make the hook just a little bit bigger, so it's easier to hold on to. Um, if you've got the metal hooks, those are, are fine. I use them myself, too. But um, this is just my preferred instrument. The great thing about Malabrigo, which is the yarn I'm using, is it is kettle dyed, so the skeins actually do vary in color slightly from skein to skein. So this particular skein of Arco Iris, I really like because it does lean more towards the purple side. <laughs> I get that, Colleen. I, I don't crochet as fast as other people. I always tell people I'm not fast, but I'm good. So you can totally use that when people ask you about it. Okay, so I've single crocheted in every chain across. And at this point in time, you kind of have a decision to make. You can go two routes with your coffee cup cozy. If you want to crochet it flat and then seam it shut, what you would do now is chain one and then turn your work. Morning, Nancy. And then just single crochet and every single crochet across until you get your desired height of the piece. Um, I looked on Ravelry and the general consensus is it's about three inches tall. And you can certainly make it taller or shorter. I've got smaller hands, so I don't really need a big cozy. So if you want to work it flat, so you just do your turning chain at the end and then single crochet across. However, there is an alternative to this. So I'm going to take my turning chain out and go back to just my first row. What you can do instead of working it flat is keep straighten your first row out so that it's not twisted at all. Bring it around to the beginning single crochet into that very first stitch and just work in a spiral. I like this because between me and you guys, I prefer not to see my projects or sew them up if I don't have to. So by working in a spiral, uh, you don't have to do a connecting um, stitch. You just literally single crochet in every stitch around until you get the spiral. So, I'm just going to single crochet in every stitch around. And I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until I get my desired height. Normally, if you're working on a project where you are using a pattern, 
I would take, let me get my little gadget case here. Oh, darn. I forgot I used all my locking stitch markers last night. So I would use either a locking stitch marker or a safety pin to mark that first stitch. But because we're not using a pattern and we're just going to keep going until we feel it's tall enough, it's not necessary to mark that first stitch. So. And two, if you feel like this looks a little big or it looks a little small, you can always do what I do. And I, again, cheated just a little bit. I've got this cup from my uh, favorite local coffee house. I've washed it, or excuse me, I've rinsed it out and let it dry. So I'll pull my work off my hook and just try it on the coffee cup cozy before I get, to, or coffee cup before I get too, too far. And I like where that lies on the cup. It's kind of halfway up. So I know if I get a smaller size coffee or tea that this will fit on a smaller cup. But I also know that if I get a larger one, this will fit on, or a taller one, it will fit. It's kind of universal at this point in time. So I like the way that is looking. I will set my cup aside and keep crocheting. So when you are doing your foundation chain, you can go ahead and connect it without doing that first row of single crochets. I just like th this way better because I feel I can straighten the single crochets out better than I can a chain. A chain twists and turns a lot. So what I do is when I'm done, like on this guy, I'm going to take my tail and go in and just close this little gap here. Yes, this is such a good use of scrap yarn, and honestly, once you learn the basics on it, you can kind of take it and run with it. So, I'm just going to keep crocheting around and around until I get my desired length or height of the cozy. So, I have one mostly finished so that you don't have to sit here and watch me single crochet until I get three <laughs> inches. So I'm going to set this aside and finish it later. So here's one also from the Arco Iris um, that I've finished or almost finished earlier. So I'm going to put that back on my hook. Oh, a moss stitch would look wonderful. Uh, Terry, I started with 39 chains, so that would be 38 single crochets. So um, when you're going around, you can kind of note the front... Um, where you started by where the tail lands. So I like the width of this. It's about the three, three and a half inches. So once you get to the end, instead of single crocheting until you're done, single crochet until you get to the point where you like it and then do a couple slip stitches. So I'm, if you've never done a slip stitch, you work into your stitch and you start it like you are going to do a single crochet but instead of wrapping, I'm going to take this loop that I just created and pull it through the first. And I'd say do that about three or four times and try and keep it kind of loose. Don't get it too, too tight. Okay. So the reason why I did the slip stitch instead of just ending with a single crochet is it gives it a little bit more of a finished look. If I just ended with the single crochet, there would be... Um, well, here, I'll just take it back and show you. So let me get my hook back in there. So if I had ended just with a single crochet, it would have kind of this almost unfinished look to it because this stitch is so tall. So by doing the slip stitches, what I'm doing is kind of completing the look and giving it a more smooth and finished look to it. So I'm doing my two, three, four slip stitches. Okay. So if you notice the slip stitch kind of hugs the fabric a little bit more. So there's still kind of a, a taller stitch leading into a smaller stitch there, but it gives it a much more finished look. And sorry, I totally forgot to pull my scissors out. So now I'm going to go ahead and 
cut a reasonable tail about six, seven inches. And then just pull your loop through, pull the yarn through the loop to complete the look. So I always, always, always weave in my, my tails. I never, ever make knots. And the reasoning behind that is, is uh, first of all, when you make a knot, the, the yarn is so close together and so tight that it rubs against each other and, and it could cause some friction and eventually wear the fibers out. Plus, if you tie a knot and then cut it close to the fabric, if that knot comes untied, you're done. There's nothing you can do to fix it. Uh, short of taking the project out to where you can get a, a reasonable tail to weave in. So I'm going to start at the bottom. This is where I did my chain and into the first row of single crochets. So I'm just going to go in here and find that first chain and I'm going to just run my tail through there and that closes the gap. So now to weave the tail in, I just go back the direction I came and I weave it through the legs of those single crochets. And in fact, I'm actually going to go up to the next round because it'll be a little easier to weave the tail in there. So pull it snug, but not too, too snug because you don't want that to pucker. But by doing that, I've closed that gap in there that was caused by our first row of single crochets. So I'm just going to weave that tail in. Now with a super wash yarn, you do want to weave it in just a little bit because the fibers are a little more slick. If you're using a yarn that is untreated, so it's an, uh, not a super wash yarn, the fibers are a little bit more raw and they will cling to each other a little bit better so you don't have to weave in quite as far. I suggested the super wash for this particular project just because of the ease of care. Um, you know, you can just throw it in the wash, let it air dry. And of course, if you make a bunch of these, you don't have to <laughs> wash them as frequently. Um, I know I, I didn't do the whole project for you guys today, but this only took me maybe half an hour once I really got going. So these are super fast and they are a wonderful present. This would be a great stocking stuffer if you celebrate Christmas. Okay, so now I'm just going to double back over my tail. So generally with a super wash, I would weave the tail about an inch and a half, two inches, and then double back over it to really lock it in place. And I love crocheting because I feel when I weave my tails in, I can make them disappear a little bit easier than I do when I'm weaving in on knitting. Um, with the coffee cup cozies, because they are going to get a little bit more, let's just say they're going to be loved a little bit more than some projects because they're going to be used an awful lot. I would do a, a really good job weaving in those tails so they don't pop out while you're using it. Okay, so that's far enough. I'm going to pull my needle off and then I'm going to take my scissors and I like these little snippers. Um, we've got some even smaller ones here at the shop right now. And then you want to cut that tail as close to the crocheted fabric as you can get it without cutting your stitches. And if there's a little poking out, that's fine. You can just kind of pull on it, tug on it until it disappears. So for the top, when you weave in your tail, you're not worried about closing any gaps or anything. So you just weave the tail in as normal. So just thread your needle. This is always the hardest part of weaving in tails is getting that yarn through the needle eye. <laughs> and then, oh, and I did turn, in case you didn't see it, I did turn this inside out. So I'm weaving it on the inside. It doesn't matter too, too, too much. So which side you weave the tails in on, this is just how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and just get that started and I will finish weaving it later. So that would be the inside. So here's the outside of the coffee cup cozy. And also too, if you want to, um, you don't necessarily need to block this, but if you want to do a spray block, just take like a, a spray bottle, get it kind of damp, and then just stick it on your coffee cup and let it dry. 
and then it will hold its shape and its its size. Um, it'll be a little snug. If it's so snug that you can't get it onto the coffee cup, then that's a good sign you need to take it out and start over. So I just found that 39 chains to start with, so 38 stitches total is a good amount for the way I crochet. If you find that it's too big when you're making it, go ahead and take a few chains away. Uh, but if it's not big enough, add a few chains. So I did make one flat. So this was just some leftover yarn I had from a pair of mittens I made. This is some Ultra Wool DK. So combined, it makes kind of a Aran weight, bulky weight yarn. And so I would need to sew it shut to fit my coffee cup. Uh, because I used two strands held together, I'm just going to put it through the eye of my needle one strand at a time. So I would cut, when you get to the end of a one, one that's worked flat, leave about a 9 to 10 inch tail and use that to sew it shut with. And then uh, whatever tail you don't use to sew it shut with, that's the one you'll, you'll just weave in on the inside. So, Ugh. there we go. And then I'm just gonna pull it, if you do decide to do this with two colors, I'm just gonna pull it until the strands line up. So I've got a little more purple here than I do white. There we go. So if you're working one flat, you would just line the edges up and sew it shut. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of yarn on the other side. And you can use any kind of stitch you want. If you want to do a mattress stitch or, um, I forgot what it's called, where you just go over and go around. I'm just going to sew this to try and get it to hide the seam as much as possible. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a dog hair there. So I'm just picking up a little bit. Oh, great. Thank you, Charlotte. I hope you have fun with this. I'm just picking up enough of the stitches to sew it shut. So when I lay it out, there's no real visible seam there. Uh, what would be totally cool, and I'm giving you some fun ideas, is if you wanted to sew this shut with a uh, contrasting color and do like an X stitch so it almost looks kind of corset-like, that would be awesome. You can always connect some yarn and do uh, slip stitches with your hook down the side to uh, sew it shut. Or you could take a contrasting yarn and single crochet it's shut. Um, I think too what would be fun is taking like silk ribbon or satin ribbon and sewing it shut with that and tying a pretty bow at the bottom. So just by picking up just enough of the stitches to sew it shut you can't really see that seam. It, it disappears. So once you get the basics down for this, you can kind of take it and run with it. So here's one I did with some scrap yarn that I did some really fancy color work in. Um, this is just some leftover moonshine from a pair of mittens that I made. And I noticed too what's really cool about doing these with color work is you are carrying two strands of yarn so the thickness is double. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, Brenda, we will be posting this to Facebook and I do believe we're going to be putting it on our YouTube channel as well. So you can rewatch it anytime you would like. So um, by working with the two colors, it doubles the fabric up. So the thickness is double. So your fingers are that much more far away from the heat. So this, um, I, this color work pattern is actually from a book called Alternates by Andrea Rangel. And the color work was designed for knitwear, but you can totally adapt it for crochet as well. And then here's one I did just for a normal at-home coffee cup. And I sewed some buttons on it of a, a you know, animated kitty cat. <laughs> they were just in my collection. <laughs> it's what I had at home. So 
um, this, I made it buttoned so I can get it off the coffee cup easy and I can get it through the handle. So uh, another way to really keep your hand away from the heat on there. Again, uh, these are all worsted weight except for this guy where I held the DK weight double. If you want to use a fingering weight, um, any weight you want, you can use scraps from any project. You would just need to adjust the number of chains. Hey Lisa, good morning. You would just need to adjust the number of stitches. That's kind of why I, I went ahead and kept my disposable coffee cup just so I could measure. But um, the 39 chains, 38 stitches seem to work well for me. And you could totally change up the stitches too. I just like the single crochet because it is a little bit more insulated. It's more compact. So that is what worked for me. And again, these were just scraps from projects. This was a, a shrug that I made. This was mittens. This was from mittens. This was actually the only yarn I used that I actually had not used it for a project previously. This is a hummingbird moon uh, over the moon superwash and Again, that is a nice superwash yarn. This guy was, this is Moonshine. It is not a superwash, but it's easily washable. Just throw it in the sink and wash it. So you can use literally any yarn you want. Uh, if you're looking at the fingering weight or lace weight, I would probably hold it double just because the weight of the yarn is so thin that it's not going to insulate your hand very well from the heat of the coffee cup. So I hope that that inspired you to make some neat little coffee cup cozies so we're not you know filling the landfills full of these guys and if you have any questions about anything you saw this morning any products techniques anything feel free to give us an email and we will respond as soon as we can and thanks guys so much for joining me this morning and i hope this inspires you to get out and crochet or learn to crochet and i hope you have a wonderful national crochet month Thanks. Bye.